Good morning. Welcome to Rising. We've got another great show for you today, and it's Monday, which means Bacha is with us. Bacha, you look lovely this morning, so nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Robbie. You do as well. It's great to be here with you. And we do indeed have a wonderful show planned for you. News Nation's Ali Bradley will break down how El Paso, Texas is dealing with an influx of migrants at the border, which was definitely a hot topic of discussion over the weekend. Yes, it was. Speaking of, Martha's Vineyard has been at the forefront of the news all weekend after a group of about 50 migrants were flown to the sanctuary destination from Florida. Now, hashtag Martha's Vineyard racist was trending over the weekend after nearly 50 Venezuelan migrants were relocated to the joint base in Cape Cod this in the state of Massachusetts also plans to activate 125 National Guard members to help handle the asylum seekers needs. Rachel Self, a Boston immigration attorney, blasted Florida Governor DeSantis for sending the migrants to the elite enclave in the first place. Let's watch. They were told there was a surprise present for them and that there would be jobs and housing awaiting for them when they arrived. This was obviously a sadistic lie. Not only did those responsible for this stunt know that there was no housing and no employment awaiting the migrants, they also very intentionally chose not to call ahead to any single office authority on Martha's Vineyard so that even the most basic human needs arrangements could be made, ensuring that no help awaited the migrants at all was the entire point. The CBP reported nearly 240,000 encounters along the southwest border in May, which is a 2% increase from April, and almost 2 million encounters this year alone. However, when asked about housing for the 50 Venezuelans in Martha's Vineyard, this is how one resident answered. The difficult challenges are uh, we have, at some point in time, they have to move from here to somewhere else. Right, we, we cannot, we don't have the services to take care of 50 immigrants, um, and we, we certainly don't have housing. We're in a housing crisis as we are on this island, and so we, we don't, we can't house everyone here that lives here and works here. We don't have housing for 50 more people. Which I think is, you know, the very hypocrisy that uh, Republicans were trying to point out in doing this stunt, which, which, to be fair, is totally a political stunt in my view. And I'm going to talk more about uh, that in my radar and what I think should be done. But look, what, you know, the point of this was, was to say, you know, you think 50 immigrants are difficult for your community to handle. Many, many times more than this are coming across the border and entering border communities every day. So if, if you're, you can't handle this, you know, the, the border towns might be somewhat better equipped, but, but not, you know, there's, there's no guarantee that, that uh, immigrants stay in these communities. They actually don't have to. The asylum seekers, who are by definition not actually illegal immigrants while they seek asylum, while they're waiting for their cases to be adjudicated, they could go anywhere in the United States. There, so so I, I totally understand the point that Republicans were trying to expose, that, you know, blue enclaves elsewhere in the country are all like rah-rah immigration in theory theory, but are not, you know, dealing with what that means actually up close. You know, what was your takeaway from all of this? I, um, I agree with you. Of course, it was a political stunt. And, you know, the sort of lefty in me, the human in me, um, you know, you see these people being used in this way. Mm -hmm. And of course, one thinks these are human beings who are being put to use in a political manner. And that did make me uncomfortable. However, I think the point that um, Governor DeSantis was making is extremely important. The compassion that progressives, especially elite, rich progressives, express towards migrants, which is driving the Biden administration's total refusal to police the border. Um, you know, this compassion has curdled into absolute cruelty, the kind of cruelty that is being incentivized by their you know, holier than thou approach towards having an open border, it has inflicted insane amounts of cruelty on the migrants themselves as they make this extremely perilous journey because there is every incentive to do it right now, but as well on their working class neighbors whose wages are being undercut by this total mm. influx, influx of two million workers, people willing to work for less than minimum wage. This is hugely problematic, but to me, the real story here was it, it, not just the 
the delicious exposure of the hypocrisy of these rich liberal elites. I mean, Martha's Vineyard, 60 percent of the people who own property there are vacationers, are, are people who come just for the summer, meaning that 60 percent of the housing right now on Martha's Vineyard is vacant. Right. These huge mansions for these people to say we don't have the housing for 50 migrants while having lawn signs on their million dollar properties that say immigrants are welcome here and then turning around and deporting 50 people from their home with those lawn signs still there right i mean it turns out immigrants were not welcome there right within 24 hours they had mobilized to deport them and there is this footage of these you know rich white women weeping hugging the migrants and saying te amo you know while expelling them from their mm -hmm. rich elite enclave and demanding that working class border towns right like celebrating you know putting putting these uh, migrants back on the bus <laughs> to get them out of town uh you know the self-congratulation of these people like oh yeah we you know we took care of the the migrants yeah for like 24 hours <laughs> exactly exactly and the thing that i think is really important to point out is not just how hypocritical this is but that this is the progressive playbook. They impose policies that make them feel holier than thou and better than their neighbors, policies that they can afford because they're rich, but as soon as it comes home to roost, then they get rid of it because the progressive playbook is impose policies that reflect the vanity morals of rich elites and then giving it to the working class as a burden to pay for it. That is the playbook and that is what we saw here on full display. Now, Ron DeSantis obviously knows what he's doing here and he knocked President Biden last week over his ability to scramble resources when it comes to rich liberal neighborhoods as opposed to border towns. Let's take a look at that. You didn't see him scramble to get his cabinet together when we hit record fentanyl deaths, which that fentanyl is coming across his open border. It's only when you have 50 illegal aliens end up in a very wealthy, rich sanctuary enclave that he decides to scramble on this. So DeSantis has also vowed to continue flying migrants to sanctuary states with Florida state funds and drew backlash from the left, of course. AOC chimed in on the situation, saying, quote, it's appalling that far right politicians seem to have decided that the fall before an election is their regularly scheduled time to commit crimes against humanity on refugees. Don't normalize this. Lying to and trafficking people for TV and clicks isn't politics <laughs> as usual. It's abuse. Now, the funny thing is, is that earlier than that, that AOC had tweeted the clip of the woman saying te amo and weeping while expelling the migrants. And she had written, this is the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I mean, I think that's exactly the point is, you know, to me, every time somebody tells you to buy an electric car, when you complain that gas prices is too high, every time somebody tells you that working class Americans should be paying off the student loans of, of, of the elites, of people who have gone to college who have that benefit, you know, every time somebody tells you to defund the police, these are policies that make rich, elite progressives feel good about themselves as long as the working class is paying for it. That was what, to me, what this episode symbolized. There's also a bit of um, uh, <laughs> extreme hyperbole in characterizing them as like human trafficking. I mean, they, maybe they were on their, you know, on their journey to the U.S. They might have been treated like that. But uh, but many of them, you know, there's I think some of them were genuinely confused or unsure of the destination they were being taken to. Others were aware where they were going. They didn't actually seem uh, very upset about it. I'll talk more about this in my radar. Um, you know, there are a lot of assumptions we make about uh, immigrants that, honestly, that the right makes about immigrants that I think are, are usually not accurate. Um, you know, th these people, I bet these people um, moved, the av the, moved the average political view of Martha's Vineyard well to the right <laughs> while they were there. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, the idea that you know, immigrants are coming here, like, in order to enact, like, more democratic or more kind of, like, far-left socialist policies, they're actually fleeing socialism. They're actually running for those po from those policies that have ruined their countries. They could uh, actually educate the residents of Martha's Vineyard and other places in the country a little bit about uh, what life is like under a politically repressive left-wing dictatorship. 
Um, so I, I don't like to see them, you know, used as as props at all. We need a we need a smart, humane immigration policy. No one wants immigrants. Pour, you know, pouring across the border in illegal uh, conditions because those conditions are unsafe for them. It's not. It doesn't make. It's not good for anyone. People die doing it. It's dangerous. It, it emboldens actual human traffickers and drug traffickers, etc. So we need to change the system so that people can come here without, you know, without resorting to that. Really, and, and then we don't know when they're showing up, and it's and, and that does cause you know the chaos, the mess on the border. So it would be great. In my view, if Congress did something to fix that, but we'll see if that ever happens. But I'll, we'll continue this discussion with my radar, which is coming up next.